Why hello there, my cuties. I want to try something a little different, a little a little funky, a little fresh. Uh, I wanted to review a movie from my childhood that is just really weird, and I feel like we don't talk about it enough. Does anybody remember The NeverEnding Story? Because I do, and it is burned into my head. I can't escape this movie. I've tried, and I can't. Every now and then, I'll just lay in bed at night and think about this movie and how it haunts me, still to this day. So, I just need the world to hear about it. The never-ending story is- is- it's a doozy. It's a doozy, alright. It's something. It's- mm. It starts off with this kid named Bastion. No, not that Bastion. Like, a human child, not a robot child. It's a little confusing, I know. It's weird. And the movie legitimately starts off with the dad being like, eh, get over your dead mom, kid, shut Death up. Mom's death. Be an excuse for not getting the old job done, right? Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, what? There was so many other ways they could have introduced this scene, like, hey son, listen, I know that you're still bummed about your mom being dead, and losing her, but like, you gotta go to school. No, instead he's just like, shut up, stop crying about your dead mom. Like, what? He also puts an egg and some orange juice in a blender, and that scene, I think about it on the daily. I wish I was joking, but I literally, on the daily, am thinking about the dad who just ate like a blended up egg and some orange juice. Was that a thing that people did in the 80s? I don't, I don't really know. So fast forward, the kid goes to school, he gets bullied cause like, I don't know, he's a nerd or whatever. Dead mom, gotta bully a kid for not having parents, as you do. But before we, you know, even get to school, he stops off at a library trying to like, escape the bullies and just straight up steals a book from an old man. Like he literally just steals a book. And it's never like, talked about later, like the, the old man's like, aha. Dang, he sure got me instead of, I don't know, like, get the kid getting in trouble. Is this teaching kids to steal? Is that, I don't, hmm. He gets to school and he just is like, actually, you know what? I don't, hmm, I don't want to go to class. And he just goes into an attic, which, what school has an attic like this? This is from a horror movie. Why does it look like this? Who, what? This is not a school, no. He starts reading the never-ending story. Yeah, I know, wow, it's the name of the movie on the book. Wow, crazy. And we're, we are jumped into the book. The book is through the perspective, I guess, of the kid reading the book and like his imagination, I think, maybe. I'm not really sure, it's confusing. My favorite part, however, um, is the snail. I like this snail. It's neat. It's a very good snail. He's, mm, he's so good. Fast forwarding yet again, we are introduced to our other protagonist, whose name is Atreyu, and he's pretty cool. Um, it's, like, hinted extremely at that he's supposed to be a Native American, like, the kid literally looks at his backpack and sees, like, a depiction of a Native American and is like, yeah, that's who Atreyu is. Which is pretty cool, um, but it, <laughs> it was, it's weird. <laughs> the way they did it was weird. <laughs> but, like, it's an 80s movie, so can I really just get, I can't get that mad about it, really, like, whatever, moving on. So, Atreyu has to go and save the, like, queen of the land because, I don't know, she's dying or something, who cares, whatever. So he goes out on this big adventure, and this this is my other favorite scene, <laughs> is the kid, and he's like, preparing to like, eat, like, lunch, and then he takes like a bite of the sandwich, and then he looks at it and he's just like, no, no, not yet, I can't, I, I can't do this yet, I have to save it for later, and it's really dramatic for no good reason. Still have a long way to go. Why? Why? I'm... alright. <laughs> it makes no sense. I love it so much. This movie's so stupid. I, I love it. Onwards we go. 
on an adventure of just wonder and joy. Oh, what's that? Just kidding. It's sadness and pain. Ha ha ha. Horse dies. Yes. Yes. Horse dies. The horse gets murdered in the swamp. Ow. What? This was a mystical adventure up until now, and now the horse is dead, and Atreyu is like, what? What am I supposed to do now? And everyone's like, just keep going, bud. And he's like, alright, guess I just gotta keep going. You know what? Don't even worry about it. Don't even question it. Keep. We gotta keep going. There's so much more we gotta keep like talking about. So suddenly, we got a storm a-brewing. I don't know why there's a storm, but it's like raining cats and dogs outside and it's like really dark all of a sudden why isn't he home why doesn't his dad care that he's not home like if my child and i'm assuming this kid's maybe like nine like if my nine-year-old hadn't come home yet and was like clearly having a bad day i would be freaking out like the cops would be at the school at this instant but no nobody cares and this is not brought up again by the way like it's not later on like the the family shows up and like his dad's like oh my god son i missed you oh i'm so sorry i was mean to you this morning no the dad never cares he's shown once in the beginning and then he's never shown again it's just him vibing somewhere with his orange juice egg drink and his son is off doing adventures and maybe dead who knows like why why isn't he home yet i'm so confused there's literally a note when i was watching this movie that's just like in all caps why didn't he go home why i in the storm i'm so confused no Trey wouldn't quit now. Yeehaw! Here we go. We're introduced to Falcor, who honestly, like, he doesn't show up as much in the movie. From what I know, he was like pretty big advertising when the movie was coming out. If I, I think I don't know. It, again, it's from the '80s. I was born in '96, so like, I'm, I wasn't uh, alive when this movie came out. But Falcor shows up and he talks. And he looks like that. I think he's supposed to be cute. And he kind of is. But he's also, like, terrifying, if I'm being perfectly honest. Which, if they were attempting to make him, like, cute but terrifying, they succeeded. But, uh, I'm very curious if they were to ever remake this movie, how Falcor would look. Because I would assume they would make him in, like, CGI and not a giant puppet that with just, like, really horrifying limbs. And he would arguably look probably better, but also probably worse. Who knows? I don't know. You know, one thing that I noticed about this movie when I was watching it, and I think a huge reason for that is because nowadays we got movies and that are like three hours long. Like most TV shows now are an hour long. I, I'm used to like watching a show that's an hour long, <laughs> which honestly made the movie feel really, really weirdly paced. It can also be because it's, you know, four kids, so, like, it, they gotta kinda move the pace along to keep kids interested, but, I don't know, so, some, some, something about it, just watching it now, I'm like, wow, it, we were there, now we're here, the, like, half the adventure was, like, gone once they got Falcor, because he's like, we gotta go to this place, and Falcor's like, well, hop on my back, let's just fly there. And when you meet Falcor, there's like a part where you he has to get to this thing to, I don't know, prove his worth. I, I still don't understand why he had to go there to the Oracle, and they, they were like, oh yeah, that's just right down the street. Like, he didn't have to go and find it. He was just, he, he was there. Like, Falcor found him, saved him, and bam, he's there. And then he has to go somewhere else, and bam, Falcor takes him there. Which, you know, having a dragon, that's super cool and all that. But I, I don't know, I'm I was kind of looking forward to the adventure of getting there. You know what they say, like, you know the old saying of like, it's the journey, not the destination. And that's kind of like what it was 
to me was like I wanted the journey of it all, not the destination. I wanted the fun of the adventure. And they just kind of skipped like literally 90% of that. And they were like, eh, whatever, dragon, woo. And it just, it was really, really strange and very, very badly paced. Also, um, every time he was on Falcor, the uh, green screening was just terrible. So bad. You can literally see the green on the green screening. Like when a YouTuber finally first gets their first green screen and they're still figuring it out and you can see all the green. That It was that bad. I, I don't understand. I'm so confused. Uh, there's a part when he Atreyu falls off of Falcor and then doesn't die. I, I don't understand how he's not dead. Honestly, it's it's kind of impressive how he's not dead. And that's like the big thing of like, oh, gotta go find, you know, Atreyu. Oh no, where could he have possibly have gone? Ah. And he meets the wolf who's been hunting him. By the way, there's been a wolf hunting him. I forgot to mention that um, because he's just so not important to the story. He's he's so, so not important, if I'm being perfectly honest. And then Atreyu just kills him in two seconds. He just is like, I'm looking for a kid. I'm looking for Atreyu. And he's like, I'm Atreyu. And then just, he murders him. He kills him instantly. There is... Like, Atreyu doesn't run around, he doesn't, like, try to escape the wolf, he doesn't try to be free, or, like, it's this, a yet again, a chase scene. No, he just, like, kills him with, like, a rock or a, or something. I can't remember. Uh, I'll, here's the scene. He literally is just dead. At some point, uh, the world is yet again still ending, which is, like, the big plot, because uh, the queen, princess... Emperor, Empress, Childlike Empress, is that her name? What's her name? Who cares? She's dying, I guess. Who cares? And then the world's ending. Somehow Atreyu and Falcor aren't dead, but like the rest of the world is just like poof. And they fly in and gotta go and go find the Empress. And there's this really dramatic scene in which she's like, there's, there's a human boy and he's been with us on this whole adventure and he had to watch you suffer to understand the story and Atreyu's like, w that's awful. I hate it here. This sucks. What? Which, like, honestly, Atreyu makes some really good points. Like, he really does. And, like, what a dude. I nearly drowned. I just barely got away from the nothing. For what? To find out what you already knew? The only way to get in touch with an Earthling. But I didn't get in touch with an Earthling! Yes, you did. He has suffered with you. He went through everything you went through. And now, he has come here. With you. He is very close. And so, the kid Bastion has to name the the empress and i still cannot remember what he named her he like screams it at some point but you it's such like it's the way he does it you can't even hear him and understand and again it's from the 80s so the mic quality is garbage so i have no idea what her name is and who cares again who cares She's like a driving force for the plot, but we only meet her like once and she's crying and then it, Bastion's crying, everybody's crying, the world's ending, and then she's like, well, the world's dead now, and Bastion's like, what happens? And she's like, well, it, it just, you know, it's dead, but here's some dirt. <laughs> She hands him, like, some dirt and is like, if you make a bunch of wishes, then the never-ending story will continue to prosper and you, 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 yay! And he's like, how many wishes do I get? And she's like, all the wishes in the world. Just make all the wishes you could ever dream of, which is way too much power to give to a nine-year-old. You ever met a nine-year-old? They would wish for, like, world destruction. Don't give all that magic to a nine-year-old. 
Um, in Exhibit A, he immediately brings Falcor into, like, the real world and starts harassing people. <laughs> Yet again, we are met with the most beautiful green screening I have ever seen in my entire life. It just <laughs> it looks so bad. This movie is so terrible, but I love it. I love it because it's terrible and it has such a special warm place in my heart because it's just awful. The plot makes no sense. The, the costume designs are really fun. And the acting's- it's alright, I guess. It's- it's not the best thing I've ever seen, but it's not the worst. I- I give it a, uh, 10 out of 10 and 5 stars for just making me so confused and laughing at how terrible it is. Please watch it. I know a lot of my audience is pretty young and will probably not care, but it's on Netflix if you ever want to watch it. That's where I watched it and I loved it. I loved every second of it even if it's just a complete disaster mess. But like, who do you, like, why not? We'd love a disaster mess, that's why you watch me, right? Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. This was honestly a lot of fun to make and something very different. Before you go, I would love to give a big thank you and shout out to my patrons, who honestly, without them, I wouldn't be able to be able to continue making content. So thank you so much to my $10 patrons, Strongcules, The Wanderer Raven, Nightmares, Barry Onyx, and Raccoon. Thank you so much to my $30 patron of Lee, hello, and to my $60 patrons of Noah and Don. Thank you guys so much. You guys are the light of my life. I, I literally don't know what I would do without you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, this was a ton of fun to make, and it was super different, and honestly, I want to do more videos like this. So I hope you would stick around and maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. I hope you guys are having an amazing day, evening, or night, wherever you are around the world. And hey, drink some water. I'll see you next time. Bye!